Hello friends. So these are the topics or the table of contents that we are going to cover in this tutorial series on Java serialization. So first I will start with the introduction where we will just define, have the definition of serialization and what is the meaning of that. Then it will be followed by, with serialization with memory buffer because for serialization we can either store the stream of bytes to memory buffer or database or file and all. So this chapter second would be covering how to use it with memory buffer. The third topic would be the standard way that how we do serialization in the projects and the production code, which is via file. We store it in, into a file in on a disk and deserialize it back. The fourth chapter would be covering the serialization versioning. Similarly, the fifth one would be if we have some array field members in our uh, Java POJO object and how to serialize and how uh, to deserialize it. Chapter six would be covering if we have got Java objects as array, which means that we actually take not as a field member of array, but actually take the whole Java object set as an array and serialize it all in, all in once. Similarly, for seventh and eighth chapter is very much similar. For seventh chapter, uh, we will see that if the Java object has got the private field members as a collection, say list or set or something, and uh, how does it affect the serialization process? And in chapter eight, we will again use this, uh, those Java objects as collection, say as a list, and try to serialize as a, the whole list in one go and deserialize it. Ninth chapter would be covering the serialization with enum constants because enum constants are somewhat special in in the space of serialization. So we'll cover this in chapter nine. And in chapter 10, we will see that how or whether it is possible to actually serialize a static field or not. In the 11th chapter, we will consider object graphs. So object graphs means that if we have got a reference field as a private member of a Java object and it refers to another object and we have got a chain or a web of graphs uh, of object graphs. So how does uh, the serialization affects there? So uh, this would be covered in chapter 11. And now the, from chapter 12 onwards, we will see that how can we control the default uh, Java serialization, which is available to us by the JVM. We can override it. We can have our custom uh, custom implementation. So this would be covered starting with the first uh, way uh, in chapter 12 using the transient keyword. In chapter 13, we will use our custom, our own custom write object and read object to customize our serialization process. And chapter 14 would be again just on the uh, we, there are like several ways where we, we can control the serialization. So this is one of them. Chapter 14 will cover that how to use object stream field class uh, and it methods to uh, do the customization of serialization. And chapter 15 we will see that how can we can protect the sensitive information. For example, if you got password or some other sensitive data, and uh, how we can protect that uh, in this serialization and relation process, right? So this will cover in chapter 15. In chapter 16, we will see that how in inheritance affects serialization. So suppose if a super class is, uh, if our parent class is not serialized and uh, the subclasses are serialized, then how does it affect the overall process? In chapter 17, we will have an alternative to control Java serialization using externalizable interface. This externalizable interface is just a subclass of the main serialize, serializable interface. So we'll see that how to use that. And in the 18th chapter, we will see that how to use, how to validate the object once we deserialize it using object input validation interface. And there's a validate uh, method inside that, how to use that. In chapter 19, we will see that how to use write, replace and read resolve methods. I think this is a very special case when we actually uh, want to replace the objects that we create out of deserialization. And uh, how does it affect, in chapter 20, we'll see that how does it affect singleton pattern. Singleton design pattern is a very common and famous pattern. So we will see that how, uh, how it is getting affected by the read dissolve method and write to place. Finally, in chapter 21st, we will see that how to use object input filter to uh, avoid uh, all the like errors that we can have or all the like security attacks that we can have uh, when we don't have any idea about the stream of bytes that we are going to deserialize. 
So this is a very advanced uh, object input filter class, which is uh, recently introduced in Java 9, I think. And I think we will, uh, we will see the use cases here. And finally, we will have in chapter 22nd, we will be having uh, an, an understanding about uh, how to use simulation proxy pattern. This is a very, uh, this, this is not very popular pattern, but if we are using the default simulation process, then this pattern actually helps us to avoid all those errors and all those security hacks which, which are possible by using this pattern. Once, once we are done with all these 20, 22 chapters, then of course we need to like understand our uh, that what we have learned so far. So the best way to do is that we will go through all those exercises and see the solutions. So in the exercises, I will uh, I will create I will create a pause of some some time so that we first you try yourself and then after that pause of say a few seconds after that I will I will display the solutions. But I will strongly recommend that you try to uh, solve the exercise on your own before before you look into the solutions. This is this is how it, it will help you. So in the next video, we will see that how to set up the project first, because this is a very hands on course. You, you need to type the code along with me. If you don't type and you just listen, it will not be that effective. You have to type the code with me. So use your fingers as much as possible. So in the next video, we'll see uh, how to set up this project first. I would be using just IntelliJ, Maven, uh, Maven for build and uh, JDK 11, as I mentioned, uh, and yeah, that's it. So these three, and we are also using JUnit and Mockito as our uh, testing framework uh, for this project. So see you all in the next video.